the bottom. Button on the bottom. It's on the bottom? Hello? Yep. All right. Hello. Hey, I want to say thank you very much for coming today. I know that you mostly are a group of concerned citizens, and I thank you for that. And I want to leave you with some tools that you can use to help keep you more informed about what's going on with your government. And so, um, to that end, I also want to point out that um, my colleague Robin Parkinson and my colleague Kevin McNellis are here and happy to answer any questions you might have. And I will be here during the lunch and available. Um, I hope to make this quite an interactive presentation. I'm going to be focusing entirely on our data. So if you have any particular questions, feel free to, to jump up. I hope to make this pretty fluid and interactive. I need to let you know right off the bat, however, that all our website deals with is contributions to state-level politicians, and that's significant on a couple of levels. That's contributions, not independent expenditures, not yet. We are working on that. As you all know, independent <coughs> expenditures can be a really big deal. That's outside money coming in and um, making statements on the airwaves about political contests. We are working on that, but we don't have that quite yet. Second piece of that is it's statewide. So if you want to know about John Tester, um, take a look at your packet. In your packet, I have a list of additional resources. One of those is opensecrets.org, and that's how you can track the money going into national politicians. Max Baucus, John Tester, Danny Reberg, Obama, Barack Obama. All of those are going to be on opensecrets.org. So but we have a ton of tools on our site. And let me tell you a little bit about what we do first of all. Is we have a team of people who do nothing all day but interface with state disclosure agencies to get the data to put it on our website to make it available to you. Now um, let me talk a little bit about Montana Commissioner Political Practices for a minute. They are a very small organization and um, people file their reports. They have their reports available in uh, PDF format pretty quick. I'm interested right now, for example, in the school board race. Very interested in that race. I wanted to go and look at their reports. Uh, they were filed on Thursday. They were due on Thursday, excuse me. They were posted on Friday, which I think is a great thing. However, they're all on PDF. How searchable are PDF? They're not very searchable. So what I had to do to find out who's financing these school board candidates was download all of those PDFs and look physically one by one. You kind of think, oh, I know her. She's a school board member. Oh, Glacier Pack. Oh, uh, you know. So I'm anecdotally running through it in my mind. I'm getting a sense, but it's taking a long time. And I don't have absolute numbers. What we do on our side is we take those state level um, contribution reports, we put them in the computer, we give it to you, you can slice it, dice it, and mash it any way that you want to pretty quickly, and if that's not enough, you can also download it. So we're making it available in ways that have not been possible before, and we're very, very proud of that. Um, so without further ado, well, I should tell you also, we should brag on ourselves a little bit, get a little credibility. Um, our data is cited around the nation. Um, we have a list also in the packet of organizations, news organizations that have used our data. Uh, our data has also been cited in um, three Supreme Court decisions, and it has been peer reviewed, and um, we had some academics look at our data a couple of years ago, and they said, well, you know, you're within four to five percent. That's an acceptable range of error. And we said, well, did you check the non-contributions data? Well, what's that? Well, that's interest. And, that's um, refunds and stuff like that. We don't count that as contributions. They say, oh, well, you're within 1% to 2% then. So we're really, really proud of that. So I want, yeah, I'm bragging, but um, I also want to let you know that you can rely on our data. We are also nonpartisan. We try very hard to be that. I have personally been accused by different people of being on both sides of the fence, and I'm proud of that too. <laughs> so um, without further ado, let me jump into our data. Now, um, here's something that I struggle with. I can not often remember what district I'm in. I hate, I mean, really. I, that's a bad confession to make in a group like this, but I can't always remember. But a lot of people, especially if they're just getting started with political activism, political awareness, they might not know this. So we have this lovely little tool. I'm on our homepage, by the way, which is easy to remember, followthemoney.org. We also have some keychains on the back with our website on it. Um, so right off the bat, you can go right here 
to My District tool. Just click on that. And the address of the Colonial Inn, let's, uh, just for fun, I believe it's 2301 Colonial Avenue. Drive. Drive, thank you. You have to have the name of your city and state, or else it'll say, sorry, I can't map it. So let's see where we are. And I have to apologize, um, when I'm on Internet Explorer, our website jumps a little bit. If you're on the Mac, it doesn't jump quite so much. Uh, but here we are, House District 78. Oops. I'm just going to keep scrolling. You got that lovely little Google map there. That's courtesy of our um, wonderful webmaster. But here you have a list of all of the candidates in the last election. There they are. Their party, which district, Senate, or House, their election status, their incumbency status. That's important because we often find that incumbents do better just for being incumbents in the election, so we track that. And then there's the total that they raised. Now, the other thing that you can do, if you want to sort this any other way, you can sort it alphabetically by candidate, just by clicking there, sort it by party, sort it by district, sort it by election status, you know, any one of those things you can click on and sort it. So that's kind of handy. Now let's look a little further down. This shows you the party control within your district. So again, this is just a basic 101 how to get oriented to politics where you live. Um, you see that the governor, lieutenant governor is green. We have on our website classified them as a third party because um, one of them is a Democrat and one of them is a Republican. So they show up as Democrat, Republican, which is not one of our actual parties. That's why that's green. But you can see that in 2004, 2006, and 2008, it was the House District 78 was Democratic. In 2010, that went Republican. So um, you can also look here at the sector breakdown for legislative candidates. Um, the largest sector that contributed in our um, current area is candidate contributions. So that, and let's see, let's take a look and see where that came from. Oh look, my top contributors, okay? Who were the two candidates who gave themselves the most money? Um, our friends from East Helena, the Kohenars. Okay, so there's kind of an overview. Now, there's lots more that we could do here that I'm not going to do, but I want to make you aware that we could. We could go back up here. You could click on Terry Murray or Jill Kohenauer and you could see where they got their money. We could see their career profile and I'll be doing that with them. Well, I'm going to be doing that actually with Governor Schweitzer later. But I'd be probably more interested in that. But um, you certainly could look at any candidate and look at their history right there. Now, as Aaron so eloquently said, are we saying that because someone has given someone else money that they're beholden to that person? Am I going to impugn someone's integrity that way? No. I'm not going to do that. But I can say it is imperative that I, as a citizen, have a sense of who my politician's friends are. Because money is not, does not equal influence, but it equals an ear. It equals an audience. And that's very, very important to the entire political process. So I'm going to go back to our home page. Um, let's take a look next. Oh. Excuse me. Take a break from our regularly scheduled. Okay, there we are. Okay, so we've got some good stuff, and I want to show you the. Um, I'll show you next. I want to show you the national overview. This is a place where you can come back to again and again. If you ever get lost in our site, go back to the home page. Go to the national overview. There's lots of wonderful things that you can do right from this page. This shows you the entire United States. Uh, the national total that we've collected so far, and we are just wrapping up our collection process for the year. How much money has been contributed? Three billion, three hundred and twenty-five million dollars. That's a chunk of change. I mean, what could that buy? That's a lot of money. And I, I sometimes amuse myself by saying, 
by trying to figure out how many donuts and things that that can buy it. Um, anyway. So you can also then go here. You can show total dollars, um, total records, completeness. Those are not some things that anybody except a power user is going to be very interested in. But this um, total dollars is where it defaults. You can look for, um, you can compare instantly exact, for example, gubernatorial candidates. Let's just do that for a second. <coughs> How much did gubernatorial candidates get in 2010? And you can see visually, a lot of money in California. Oh, that's a big surprise, isn't it? Um, and in Florida, and just a little bit in Montana. It's not white, though. It was a little bit. Not a lot. I'll, again, I'll tell you about that later. That wasn't very interesting. You can um, go back all the way to the 90s. Um, in some cases, most of that um, in the early days is judicial data, but. Here's something that's very interesting. I'm going to keep it on gubernatorial candidates here for 2010. No, actually, I'm not. I'm going to change it to 2008, because that's the year we had our last gubernatorial election. And as I said, when I looked at um, Schweitzer's money in preparation for this, I discovered that he reported $26,000, but $23,000 of that was a refund. So did he really get that much? But let's take a look at 2008 gubernatorial candidates, um, more money. We can, we have two options. I'm going to do both. I moused over and it shows me the <coughs> breakdown of contributions for this office in Montana, 2008, shows me the total raised, how much um, came from a Democrat, that was a primary candidate, because again, Schweitzer and Bollinger show up as third party. Um, $1.8 million for them. That's a lot of money. And then the Republican candidate got $751,269. And we didn't have any money to ballot measures that year. So I can click on Montana. This takes me to the state overview page for this year. If I don't want this year, I can scroll here and I can go to the time machine and I can pick another state in another year. But I do want this year. And I want to look at these governor candidates that was returned for just clicking from where I was. And I'm going to look at the uh, current governor. Any minute now, I'm going to be looking at it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So this shows me 2008. This shows me um, the total race is... Um, 1.8. These are all the records. You want to see all the records? You can download those um, if you wish. You have to sign in. My follow the money. We don't save your data. Um, but uh, that's what I was talking about when you can slice and dice and mash the data. Um, but you can also go here. Let's go down a little bit and look again. Who are their top contributors? Not a lot of interest here because in Montana we have low contribution limits. You go to some place like Illinois that has no contribution limits, you'll see top contributors can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not here. You get a lot of individuals giving here. Montana Democratic Party, 20,000. That's not a big surprise to anybody. But here's where it gets a little more telling. Um, you look at our top 15 industries. This is automatically generated. You don't have to do anything to get this. Just what I did is click. Um, retired people who list their occupation as retired are the top. Um, lawyers and lobbyists is the next largest industry that gets $265,008. Securities and investment, $78,405. Um, civil servants, public officials, who, now these are our incumbent, this is our incumbent governor. Let's take a look at our um, civil servants, public officials who's, who are giving. Let's see Dan Box. He's the um, head of the revenue department. Um, Ann Brodsky. I forget where she works, but she's, um, she's a member of the executive branch. Um, uh, Evan Barrett. Um, ooh, our bad. We, um, as the data comes in, 
We take it as a candidate it gives it to us. So they may have misspelled the person's name wrong, but I can see that. And when we have smaller dollar amount records, we sometimes miss things. And so actually we could add $500 to Dan Box, it looks like. Um, anyway, so there you have that. You can take a look and see. Because we're a small state, we know a lot of these people, don't we? We've heard of Bob Schleicher, and we've heard of um, Dave Hunter, and we've heard of Janet Harper. So we kind of have a sense. Okay, so these are the friends of our governor. Any uh, questions about candidate contributions before I go and start taking a look at uh, ballot measures? Or the, I also want to show you the uh, legislative committee analysis tool. Do you have a question, Aaron? Well, just, can you search by donor specifically, too? Where oh, yes, to absolutely. Donor? You can search by contributor. Let so, me show you that. Okay, great. And that's where our data really becomes magic, in my opinion. Is you can look at which contributors are giving uh, across, um, across candidates, across committees, across states, across years. You can look at patterns. Um, yeah. It really becomes powerful when you start to look at that. And, and how many, just before you go on, Yes. You know, you've got the Dutch Flats guy there. We just, if you don't, could you scroll down again? Oh, certainly. So a lot of these must be duplicate. Um, you, if you go down, go down a little lower. These all represent individual contributions. Okay, but Richard H. Conlon and Richard H. Conlon mm -hmm. from Narco. Those are two those are two, separate, two separate contributions okay. that were given. Uh, yep. So if you click into those, it will give you a timeline or something? Well, you know, let's take, yeah, we have a timeline to it, which is awesome too. Okay. Um, you were talking about the timing of contributions to Tester earlier. Um, we had done a report concerning the timing of contributions to a uh, public official in Iowa that um, gained some attention lately. Oh, there's a the total then, okay. Yep, so this is his total nice. given to date. He's from Norco, California. He works for a government agency there. Um, we don't give any more identifying information than that. Some state, in some states, we will also get address data. We don't share that information. Um, so who does he give to? The party. Governor. Well, in Montana, we're guessing probably that's the governor. So that's who he gives to. And four times? Four times, looks like it here. Yeah, four records. And the dates? Oh, let's see. Let's find the dates. Uh, <coughs> see records. Oh. Yep, you're way ahead of me there, Aaron. See records. Because that individual is yes, key. Because oftentimes you'll get people say, oh, I'm just an independent or something. And then you Google their name and you, you and come you to this and you're like, oh, but yet you've given money to this guy for. Yeah, but this. someone may very well consider themselves to be independent and brand themselves independent and not participate in any party whatsoever. But find that they give consistently to candidates who fly under one flag or the other. So, so there you are. Date unknown. That's very interesting. Um, will you Maybe it just wasn't recorded. Did they take the time. We got there? some new data in recently, and uh, that may have that. We also have had, we're migrating to a new system. So this may be, this unknown is not an option in our system. <laughs> 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 we found the glitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Because sometimes, you know, it's just like Aaron says, sometimes there may be an interest in the timing of the contribution mm -hmm. back to the, you know, whatever. Help this whatever. end of the room to understand what's going on here if you've raised your voice and that. <laughs> All right. My apologies. Do we have another mic that we could pass around maybe? Wait, yes we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me show you the timeline tool. I'm gonna, how am I doing for time, by the way? 11.02, I'm over time. No, keep going. I can, I can go to 11.15. Oh, you got 11.15? Hot dog, okay. <laughs> so, let me, I'm gonna show you some ballot measure stuff. Um, but I'm going to, if I have time for nothing else, I must show you my very favorite tool, which is a Legislative Committee Access Tool, or LCAT, because we like acronyms. All right. 
Now, I understand that um, at least one person in the room is interested in public pensions. This is a tool that explores the intersection between committee assignments and political contributions. So what we have done is we have partnered with Project Vote Smart out of Phillipsburg, and um, they're a wonderful organization, and they provide us the committee data. And I'm going to go to Montana. <coughs> This is committee assignments for the 2011 session matched with political contributions from the 2010 election. Okay, So contributions that happened in August through November 2010 and matched with the people in these committees in 2011. Okay, so I'm going to look at the House committees because um, some of the Senate races weren't up in 2010. And I'm, again, I'm sorry about the jumping. And I'm going to look at the... Um, the State Administration Committee, which is the committee that uh, deals with public pensions. They oversee CURD, etc. So, let's just take a look at some things here. Okay, so this will tell you. This is also very handy, even if you're not interested in the political contributions, because here you have a list. This is a comprehensive list of the people who sit on the Montana Administration Committee. And it's current. And um, there are their party, office and district, and the total that they raised. Now, if you want to know more about them, whether or not they filled out the political courage test, um, some of their biographical information that we don't have on our site, you can click on any one of these folks. Come on. There we are. Um, and that will link you to Project Vote Smart and get that information right there. So well, let's just pick somebody at random. Let's pick the chair since they're kind of there. Let's just click on them, look at a distribution. Could you pick on Frank Wilmer? Yeah, uh, she's going to be running for... Oh, you betcha. Uh, she's be running for as soon as he so. loads, I'll go back and then I'll click on Frankie Wilmer. But it's not cooperating very much with me today. It's, like, it's trying to follow the <laughs> money. Just give it a second. <laughs> well, we have a lot of records in our database as well, but it's usually pretty... Pretty fast. Okay, so we're going to go back. We're going to click on Frankie. Is she running for AG? No. 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 Governor. Governor? Governor? Well, Carla, U.S. House. She wants Danny Rigberg seat. Oh, okay. House okay. against Danes. Okay. <laughs> About how many uh, inquiries do you get a day? Do you know yeah. how many people are accessing your site per? We had, um, do you remember? We had a presentation by our communications department two weeks ago that told us that answer to that very question. And it's over 10,000, but I can't tell you more than that but in a month. We had expected, we usually see um, that, you know, 12,000, 13,000 over um, when the elections are going on. But what we've seen lately is there's a continuing trend even into this year. Usually our numbers kind of slope off, but they haven't been. Um, and I could get that information and I could um, email you back with that. I think we set a new record in March. I think we had 50,000. Oh, was well, that unique IPs? Do you yeah. remember? Huh? Do you remember if that was unique IPs or hits? Uh, I think that was just general. Just hits? Okay. There's a difference between, like, somebody from my house could hit our site 10 times. So we count 10 hits, but then we would only count one unique IP address, if that makes sense. So people can kind of follow what we're talking about. All right. So here we have Frankie Wilmer. She won in the last election. She was incumbent. Um, she sits on the Education, Fishy Parks, and State Administration Committees. Fishy. Well, that's what, yeah, Fishy Parks, that's what, okay. anyway. <laughs> and Public Health and Human Services, before they changed their name again, we used to call Doofus. <laughs> but I didn't say, oh, shoot, I'm, oh, darn it. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, then, moving on. Oh, yes, that's right, moving on, thank you very much. Okay, so um, these are her top contributors, but again, in Montana, Top contributors. They'll show you who their friends are. There's some, you can see some union money there. 
But let's take a look at the aggregated data. Top 15 industries retired. That's not too common. I mean, that's not too uncommon in Montana. Um, lawyers and lobbyists, 785. Education, 610. Livestock, public sector unions, health professionals. So this gives you quite a good broad overview of who is supporting her. And again, if you want names or um, dates or any of that stuff, you simply have to drill down in the data and, um, and you can download it. And I had said you can download it about three times. Now let me show you how you exactly do that. Right here you see my follow the money. All you have to do is sign in and tell it you're not a computer by giving it that weird, typing in the weird text. And, um, and you can have an account with us within a very short period of time and download the data. Um, let's see. So I have about two more minutes. I could show you some ballot measures, but I'm going to take some questions instead. Yes? Oh, okay. um, so the <clears throat> Thanks. Um, so the, you're just getting data from the Commissioner of Political Practices, practices and you're getting it, and the data you're getting is just PDFs and yes, work and, files? and then we, um, we hire people to type it in, and we independently audit it, and then we post it on our website. Okay, but they're using, I mean, their data is in databases, correct? Um, the Montana Commission of Political Practices? Yes. Not always. They are migrating to a new system, and they are also inputting some of the data that their candidates give on paper files instead of posting on PDFs, but that process is ongoing. What, can you say some more about why the data is that hard to get? I mean, well, wow. Um, please. We have a report on our website called Best Practices, where we survey um, the disclosure agencies in 50 states. We combed their websites and we looked at all of them for how they're doing it. And what we hear time and time again is um, we lack funds. I believe that the Commission of Political Practices has four staff people for the number of reports that they get and um, some of the controversies that's been roiling through, some of the complaints that they've had to investigate. They, in my opinion, simply don't have enough time or resources to do better than they're doing. And um, as unpopular as this may be at that moment, um, I think they're doing the best that they can. I really do. I make a point on that. We, we have, MPI has a site called opengovmt.org. And in that site, we have a database of public compensation all for every state employee. Uh, you can sort it in many different ways. And we also have school a school spending site where every district you can go in and you can get categorized spending revenues for every school district in the state. And in gathering that data, what we found was that Montana's open record laws, frankly, are stuck in the 80s. The problem is our record, our open records laws say that you have a right to any public record in the state, but you have to show up and ask for it, and they have to make you a copy. There's absolutely, and now a lot, of, a lot of agencies are going out in front of that and they're making it available electronically. They'll email it to you, they'll do these different things. But as we have found in many cases, they'll send you a letter back saying you're happy to come by and make a copy anytime you want. That's fine if Helena says that, if plenty of says that, it's a different problem we have. So the biggest problem, and I don't know if you guys have looked at it this closely, but the biggest problem we see is there is no requirement in Montana law for public agencies that gather, store, manipulate data in Excel spreadsheets or database files or whatever, there's absolutely no requirement for them to give you that data in an electronic format that you can then go out and manipulate and put into wonderful websites that turn that data into usable information. Absolutely no requirement in Montana law to do that. To the extent that any agency has done it, they've done it on their own dime and out of their own time. And so they, the few that have should be applauded. But if you want to change this and make this information more accessible and more usable to the common voter, we've got to change that law. And there's nothing that forbids it, though. There's nothing that forbids it, right. but there's no incentive for them to do it. All right, Alana. Just one quick question. Do you have any of the reports for the, the local or county? We don't or have any of the reports for the local. That's why I had to go to the COPP site and look at the school board data myself. Yeah, I wish we did, but um, we focus on the state level candidates. So, um, one last question. Don't shoot me for asking this, but how are you funded? 
how, oh, well, in our packet, there is a list um, of some of our major funders. We are funded by um, foundations. We don't get government money. Some individuals give us money. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Um, well, thank That's you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, how can we take money from the agencies that we are purporting to be watchdogs of? Right. So, um, for that, we don't take money from parties. Um, we try to keep it very, 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 very clean. Although I'm sure that if you examined our list of funders, you could find somebody on one side or the other or who you perceive. Um, but there it is. So it's all very public. Also, our 990 is posted to our website. <coughs> so you can get information about us. We try to be really transparent. I mean, we're advocating transparency, right? So, um, oh, and one last thing I wanted to address is um, the Sunlight Foundation is one of our funders, but they're also a really wonderful site for federal data. If you're interested in um, an aggregation of all kinds of information on federal government, besides campaign contributions, I would definitely check out the foundation, Sunlight Foundation online. I think it's sunlightfoundation.org might be that simple. All right. So again, I'll be here at lunch. Robin and Kevin will be happy to help as well. And I thank you for your time and attention.